Pat Milton. Oh, I don't have any of the cards. I was just going to write on paper. Oh, you want to? Okay. Yeah. We've got Dan, Pat, and Milton working right now. Pat. You know, starting out, bring the toss down. That's a little high for this for these guys right now. Not a big deal, but keep in mind. Now, let's get right after it right away. Let's think about where that, where if and when that was a foul. Whose primary responsibility that's supposed to be? Well, uh, that's where I was going to go with this. Now, here's, here's the problem, and not say problem, but something to think about. We come out of our primary court coverage, and we make a call. Now, the question I would ha ask is, you're a center official on the opposite side of the court, looking through players, looking over. We have our lead in position. Our trail is coming up. Is it possible on that play that... We really had a travel, a foul. You know, let's let our primary officials take some coverage first and then worry about adding on, and then add on if we need to come and get it. I'll be honest, in my opinion, I was, I was around center court when this when play happened. It looked to me more like a travel on, well, it's not say incidental contact, but a defender that's just standing there and the kid bumps off of him. So just, Something to keep into consideration there. Good wide angle as the lead. Now center, look to position adjust. You know, stats up, position adjust yourself. So you can get that good angle all the time. Is yourself moving in position to see it. So if we look at that play specifically, Dan, you kind of you went in the rotation, which was fine, and then the shot kind of went up. Remember, you can come back, because while you're moving, what we have happening as a crew, we all get out of rebounding position if we don't come back to our spot. So just consider that um, and we don't necessarily want to move on that shot. We can, we can look. We can stop, the shot goes up, we can back on out. Okay, I like the foul call. I like the foul call. I mean, simple mechanic stuff. Remember, front court. We're not bouncing it on the baseline. Hand it to him. Step away. 
and then I know it's awkward with where the table is, but let's simulate as much college as we can and force them to rotate over so we can force them to rotate so that we can get in position. Make that rotation as real as possible. It doesn't hurt. right with the world. I have arrived. Good no calls. It'd be a play to take a look at again, you know, outside lane, down the lane, you know, primary responsibility on who's calling that play. I mean, it's a foul, and we have to get the foul, but give opportunity for others to make that call down the lane. Need to be gotten. Need to be gotten. Glad you stayed with the play. A lot of times officials get off those plays. It clears the basket. That's when we get ourselves in trouble. You know, up shooter still airborne, comes back down. You know, ask yourself the question: What am I going to do with that play if the shooter's returned to the floor? So. Just something to consider on that play.
hard. Instead of busting his rear end, get in, get in front of the plate. Right? No, my head wrong. You can't be lackadaisical and you can't be lazy. If you, can't, the if you can't get there, you better get an angle. And the other angle, instead of being on side, would be back here. This is a 45. So he should have really slowed up. Let's get our hand up, bring the substitutions in. Thank you. Step in, Pat. Don't just hang. Don't hang. Don't hang. Now we go. Now this is for everybody. Just think about we can't just hang out at the top when a shot goes up. We need to position, our, position to adjust ourselves so we can get in position to get rebounding fouls. Right? I mean, people have different philosophies. Some people say, you know, get your stationary spot, hold that spot, and you're fine. Well, position themselves adjust always. You know. You know, look at that and see they came from behind. Place into to the floor. And this is where our position adjustment comes in. If our center of physical position adjusts himself, maybe a step onto the court. Maybe a step off to the court. They just open up a different angle and different view of what they can and can't see while they're officiating. That makes all the world a difference. Yeah, I guess we could ask the question, you know, what are we thinking with some of these plays and calls? You know, are we consistently getting the right the outcome? Okay, just keep reminding yourselves okay, up the floor again. We got to move up the floor with these kids. I mean, I, you know, right, position ourselves, position ourselves. They're moving up the floor. We need to move up the floor. It's hustling all the time. You know, I get it. It's camp. Whatever number of games we're on, but we still need to get ourselves up and down the floor. We're only working three games today. We need to get ourselves in position for those three games. And down the floor we go. I'm good, we'll be good. Go rotation over. You, know, you can, Dan, you can help expedite that by moving. Now you can pull over. And get ourselves in positions to see that play. Get ourselves over. Move quicker. Help pull him along rather than just appearing there. Now you can drag him. If you position again, if you position adjust yourself as that, in that case, the center official up top to get an angle on the play, you're signaling to your tri or so you're signaling to your lead, hey, I need you to come over. I want you to come over. Don't finish, Pat. Don't don't quit on the play. Get down the floor. Get down the floor. Now the women's game is at the, the women's game is about the same speed as what we've got here. That's a foul. Okay, that's all right. I like that. That's good. That's what we want to do. Got a position. Look where we're officiating that play. 
we were to pause that play on that layup, we're standing under the hoop. Our center never moves to adjust to see the play going to the floor. Okay, right now, for example, move on up. Why are you letting him officiate this all by yourself? You gotta move. Don't turn your head. Get up the floor and get yourself in position to see the play. Now we're missing stuff because we're not hustling down the floor. All right, there, there's that's not there's no excuse for not being up and down the floor. I mean, again, I get it. You know, I say we're not. I'm not trying to be harsh or mean when I say that. We got to be up and down the floor. We're missing a lot of contact. Well, let's be honest, maybe non-contact, but we're not in a position to really pass any judgment. We're down the floor, we're not in a position to see if it's a foul or not. We're just like, oh, yeah, we'll play on. All right, got to hustle our butts every play here. I mean, so far this game's not given us much to like look for rotations. No. And then it's knowing when to rotate. When do we go? When do we not go? I like that. It's a good hand check foul. I like the call. It's fitting. But now we've got to keep keep in mind, catalog this as a crew. All right? That's really like our first hand check foul that was called. So I'd ask the question is, you know, that's an illegal screen. Okay. That's an illegal screen. Now, we, Pat, you've got to be able to pick that one up. I know that's a lot to ask. You've got the ball handler, dribbler, and a defender. But you also have a screen coming like right in front of you. At the, at the collegiate level, we've got to be able to pick that play up. Why? Let's let's think about this play, the illegal screen play. Now let's 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 work through that play. We do have some decisions that need would need to be made. Okay. Now, what if I said the shot was away? Ball's gone. It's a shot, and now we have a foul. We need to think about all of our scenarios and situations. We can't blindly. Oh, uh, bonus. Okay. We can't blindly do it. Get the play. We have an illegal screen. Before a shot. It does make a difference. So if, we're shoot, if that shooter's up and that ball's gone, and we come and have an illegal screen, we got a tough sell. So we got to get that right away. And this comes back to like being able to pick that play up as, as a trail official. Here it comes. But also, you know, expand our, our vision as a lead. You know, all right, let's take a look at this play. Okay, uh, let's not talk about right or wrong, offensive foul or block. Let's not go there. Let's strictly talk about court coverage and positioning. We have a drive right down the middle of the paint. 
right down the middle of the lane. The kid wears it. It's a secondary defender. That has got to be in cadence. That's got to be lead. Lead passes because they can't see because there's you know seven bodies in its way. Cool. Then we have our, our upside official come and get that. But that should have been a lead call first, secondary whistle, or even a third whistle if we needed to. Okay, so just, again, our court coverage, the women's college game is so much about what we've got, where we're at, how it fits, things like that. So right now there's 18 seconds left. Think time and time and situation of the game. Okay, it's the end of the period. It's the end of the half. It's the end of the game. What might we expect? So here they came out and pressed. Okay, but we're not here to help. And Milton, you're 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 taking off down the floor. Stay here and help. Now don't make our our lead. You know when a players get or excuse me our trail when a players getting two three bodies around them. Why? Let's not. Let's not leave that play alone. Let's stay here and help and officiate that. Because if we think about the situation, we've got the ball and four or five players down here. Let's be in position to help that. We hang out in that C spot, all right? The pressure clears and then we go. That'll take us to halftime.
Good. Much better rotation that time. Okay. Give him some space. I said, that'll be one that, I'll be honest, I don't think the film's going to show it, just where the angle of the camera is. But you rotate it over, you picked up the play. It's right there for you. And away we go. Milton, just don't be afraid to be like getting... Don't be afraid to be a little wider as our lead. Okay. You're getting to almost like a close down-ish spot and you're staying put. Let's let's be wide so we can see that play come through. I mean, truthfully on this play, we might want to consider looking at that one closely and I'll ask the question, what did the defense do wrong? Legal guarding position, was it established, was it not? Ask yourself that question. If you say yes, um, if you say, excuse me, if you say no, there's no legal guarding position, cool. If, if we look at the play, if they maintain and they're in legal guarding position, you know, could it have been a travel or could it have been a no call? So think about that. Other side though, there we go. The same theme as you're starting the second half. Get down the floor. If we're not gonna get down the floor in transition, it puts us at a very tough, very tough angles to make calls. It puts our crew in a bad situation. He said, if, if we're beat, it's okay to take an angle onto the floor to get a four, maybe a 45 degree look at something to the hoop. Because it happens, it happens to all of us. We're making our move, we're positioning adjust, and the pass comes and it's gone the other way, and there's no way you're gonna catch them. But that doesn't mean we don't try to get down the floor and, and to see something. A coach cannot, they can live with a missed phone, a missed call. They're not going to miss if we don't hustle down the floor. That just, it just can't happen. Yeah.
Okay, so let's let's take a look at these last two plays here, if we can, and back up a little bit on the player control or the team control foul. Sorry if I'm talking women's women's verbiage here. A team control foul. Okay, again, we're driving. You know, it's hard for me to see how far down the lane we were. It still looked like to me a primary defender, so I'm okay with that. You know, but we, again, we got to position adjust ourselves so that we can then maintain and see that space in creation. If we stay out high as a trail on that drive, our angle or our window of where the contact occurs or doesn't occur, that can change. And if it, a lot of times plays can look to be something and may not be. I like the call. I think it was a good call. But it, if we move, our believability and our credibility is going to go up. And then also our accuracy is going to increase. And the more accurate we are, the better things are going to be for us. Okay? Look at me wide. Yeah, again, I mean, I guess it's for everyone again. Let's consider ourselves just being a little bit wider in that lead position. The wider angle is going to give us a better look at what we're looking at. Right now, we got a lot of closed down looks. Like right now, I mean, that's a good travel call on the catch and go. Good spot. Right, bouncing it across. Stop, Pat. You stay in the seat. Women's, we stay. Okay. You just you stay in the seat. You bounce across in college. So yeah. You're still the seat. You're the seat. He bounced behind you. So you're the oh, seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, yeah. You're good. But like that, you know, no fall. It is what it is. High school, we rotate. Women's college, there's no rotation. You give the spot. The lead's going to bounce it, and then the way we go. That's bad acting. That's bad acting. Which one? Down here. Uh, a three? Yeah. Yeah, we just had it. We, we just did a three way. I was in transition. And I raised it and I left it on my trail. I just think that last play, um, we did a, first of all, we did a three person rotation. And on that three person rotation, just think about the angle that we, what we did. I, we all went to different spots. Talking to myself. So we had that that play to think about. You know, this is where you can have philosophical differences. That was a double whistle. Why? He caught the ball outside the lane, goes up, contact comes over, makes contact on a shooter. Now the shooter's in the center's primary. The foul comes from the lead's primary. Now, flip a coin, right? Keys we get the play right. Double whistles aren't bad. Hold your cadence. If you do have a double whistle, just make sure you make eye contact so that you have the same foul or the same call. The last thing we want to do is have maybe someone, you know, oh, I got, I got to travel or I got to push off or I have this. We don't want that. We want to make sure the consistency is there.
can say it again. We're 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 not maintaining our visions on plays. If we watch that play when the ball into the when the shot's going up, we're both backing out. Our trail and our, our center are both retreating to center court. I know we don't want to get beat down the floor, but this is it's simple. We just gotta bust our backside and get down the floor. If we both leave and it's a missed shot, we're leaving we're letting our lead call a rebounding foul, which he's not going to call or she's not going to call unless the kid winds up in their lap. It's just a simple, you can't see in the front what happened behind them. That's where our center and our trail are so important on, on rebounding. And we just did it again, we kind of are leaving early. If we look at this play at 750, 7.50 on that shot, our trail and our center are both in the same spot. They're mirror images of each other, across from each other. That's a problem. We handle it well when their situations are weird. Just think, you know, we don't have the best scorekeeper and table personnel. That that takes away from things, and there's a lot of whistles and whatever. And Dan, he's right behind you. Milton, just push him down. Get him. All right. Look where we're at. Look where we're at. Yeah, you go back where you are. We've got to know where we're on the floor. Okay, think about the rotations. And then be vocal about it. You're coming up behind them. 
Let them know you're there. I mean, it, it happens. It happens in the NBA. It happens at the D1 level. So that's okay. We just got to let our partners know, like, hey, here I am. You need to move. So, Danny, you need to rotate on over. Rotate on over. Pat's inbounding the ball. Okay. Like I said, that's one of those awkward plays where we're pinched against the sideline and we really don't have anywhere to go. Got four minutes left. Three point game. Now again, now I, I don't want to. It's not a degree or disagree situation. I just want you to. I want us as a crew to think about the fouls we got. Okay. Now that's the second half out of a 20 minute half. I think it's 20 minutes. I'm not. I, yeah, we're four minutes left in the half, and we we had a hand check foul. Ha, have there been more? Okay, just consider that situation. Okay. Use our voice. We're shooting a bonus. Bonus situation, yep. Okay. And I get it. With a place like this and the way the courts are and the way the teams are, you know, we got to make sure that, you know, we let people know where we are and it's tough. Okay, make the switch. Make your rotations. We got to switch. Roll up. Roll up. Make the switch. I know it's... Okay. Now we got... Let's just look at this travel. Travel, absolutely correct. Okay. If we're coming over, if we're coming over to administer, if he points to the baseline, we take a step toward him, we bounce. We take it, we bounce. Pat, that's five. Okay. What I was saying is, if that travel occurs out and he points to the baseline, you know, ask him. Sideline, baseline. Be vocal about it. If it's on the baseline, give the spot, bounce it across. He stays in the center. If he wants it on the side, then we come over and fill the spot and force him down. Again, that's the difference between here and high school basketball.
I said in the big picture of our officiating realm right now. We went through the game, and we let a lot of that contact go in the first half. So you're getting the looks from the players now in the second half, like, what the hell is going on? How is this a foul? That happens because from the, from the time the ball goes up, if we put air on those plays, they know what's coming. If we're not on the same consistency level with those, you're going to get those looks. And a lot of times those looks lead to not so good situations with players. They do. A little higher, good. Still higher in the C spot. You're the, you're the trail though, Dan. Stay with it. Okay, two-point game now. Think like the players. This is why we have to be up and down the floor. No, you can't get beat on that. Okay? We have to be up and down the floor. Now it's crunch time. We got to be flying around. I mean, remember now, they're trying to foul. Here's, here's where the situation went from bad to god-awful. Why did this just occur? Let's ask ourselves a question right now. Let's ask ourselves the question. The reason this occurred is because we don't call the first foul. No the time and score. No situation. They're trying to foul. Why are we going to make... 